Anyways, and as people come in, please, please, please say hi, say good morning. And also, if you have any questions regarding vitamin D, this is our topic today. This is such an awesome topic. Um, this is one that I've been so interested in for years. And then Debbie and I, you know, we've been talking about it and Debbie's so knowledgeable on everything health wise. But then when we really started getting into vitamin D, then we were like two geeky nerds talking about all the science and stuff. But there's so... There's so much interesting stuff out there for vitamin D and how it can help us in our everyday life, things that you might not have thought of. Good morning, you guys. Good. Everybody's coming on. Good morning, Leslie. Good morning, Becky. Um, I'm going to say really quickly, too, before we get started, you know, my tangents, um, just quickly in our Facebook group, our Intentionally Fair Facebook group, we do have our um, fasting, seven day fasting challenge that starts today. So if you guys are interested in doing that and you don't know what I'm talking about, please go to the announcements because that's where I have the information, the start guide and everything like that. And I tell you where to go to do it. So that's going to be really good. Lots of us are doing it this week. And no, it's not seven days of not eating. It's seven days of some form of fasting, whether you've done it before and you want to push yourself or you've never done it before and you want to learn. And this is the perfect week to do it because we can help you. So um, the other thing I want to mention in case anyone is new here, uh, my name is Lita and this is my guest Debbie today. And we just want to let you know that we are not doctors. Just want to point that out. Uh, we're just super passionate about natural health and we just want to bring you the information and then you can decide for yourself, you know, what works for you. Good morning, Carmen. Good morning, Kaylee. Okay, so let's get started because this is a big topic. I've got all these papers here of really great information and Debbie is just a wealth of information. Um, I'm going to start off, Debbie, just reading this one little blurb that you've got here because this is something that maybe not everyone has thought of these things. When we think in terms of vitamin D, I think a lot of us, we, we know about the sun, obviously. We think, oh, maybe it's in our multivitamin or something like that. But we don't really think about how it affects us if we don't have enough. So here's just some of the common things for a uh, vitamin D deficiency. Feeling tired all the time. You know, have you ever, have you ever connected that with vitamin D? That's really interesting. Feeling down or depressed, symptoms of seasonal affective disorder. I can tell you that I had that big time. I had that for years, uh, many years ago. And I could not believe the difference when I started increasing my vitamin D in the winter time. That was huge for me. Uh, muscle or bone pain, losing hair. We get a lot of people that bring that up in the group. Getting sick frequency, so have, um, frequently I should say. So your immune system, not so good. Problems focusing and short term memory problems. So those are just some of the, you know, some of the ones that maybe we might not think about. But Debbie, I'm sure that you can can talk about so many more than that. <laughs> you see it all the time, right? Yeah, um, I will go into it quite a bit. And um, what I'm going to do is I do have my own notes. And I think are we gonna make these available to people after the yes, yes, so, definitely. Okay. really awesome. All her notes are in a PDF. And what I'm going to do is when we're all done today, I'll post it in this particular chat, I will also do another post in the group and I will save it in the unit section. And I will do that. Um, so that everybody has access to all of these notes and everything you're talking about. Okay, so I, I generally don't refer to my notes when I'm talking, but there's so many stats I really wanted to get across to everybody and so i don't want to miss anything it's now so are people, oh yeah now yeah. are people able to comment about if they take vitamin d if sure. so how much do they take yeah how much do they take comment and yeah, has comment. anyone ever had their vitamin d levels checked ah yeah it'd be interesting to see how many people really know what their vitamin d levels are and if they could comment on that that'd be great to see as well yep 
Okay, yep. so um, you mean vitamin D is such an important nutrient. It's actually a hormone. It's produced, and it's actually really responsible for um, activity of select hormones. Now we all think about vitamin D in regards to our bone health, you know, and, and preventing osteoporosis, which we know it does. You know, uh, vitamin D helps um, monitor the level of calcium and in the blood that's available for the bones. Now it helps with brain development. A lot of times, especially when women are pregnant, they're increasing their vitamin D intake. And even if newborns are given vitamin D as well for brain development, it can um, reduce pain sensitivity, which a lot of people don't know. It can reduce inflammation in your body and it really stimulates the uh, immune system. And I'm gonna get into that a lot more in this talk. Um, now, when I ask people if they're aware of their um, uh, vitamin D level, you know, because 93% of uh, Canadians, because we're at higher latitude, are deficient in vitamin D. And about three quarters of adults and teens in the U.S. are also deficient. And there's... Um, there's some consensus around the wellness community that you want your um, vitamin D levels between about 100 and 150 nanomoles per liter. Now, I, I just wanted to show you, and I hope you can see this. Um, okay, this is me. I was in California last year and um, for two months in um, uh, October, November, then and came back and I was still taking about 3,000 international units of vitamin D a day and decided to do my testing. And my testing came down, uh, came back at 37. What we're doing is measuring D3, which is the active form of uh, vitamin D. And I should be optimally 100 to, uh, or about 80 to 100 or higher. And I'm at 37. That's incredible, actually. Yeah. Because and you know, know and I'm the value of being out in the sun and you take right. vitamin D. So that just shows you how much you have to take. Right. in order to get that number up you know and everybody's individual and we're going to go into why you know some people are lower in vitamin d than others and uh like i said i was taking three thousand international units a day rarely use sunscreen unless i'm out for a long period of time in hot sun okay so um be really interesting to see if people do know their vitamin d levels and um can i uh, read out a couple here debbie i'll just read mm -hmm. out a couple um mm -hmm. lisa said that hers was checked and that it was extremely low She's taking 10,000 ICU or IU. probably. Mm -hmm. yep. And she's thinking of upping it to 40,000 because it's starting to get a little bit more mainstream. We're now starting to hear that, you know, right. from the specialists are talking about it. So that's really good that it's getting out there. Um, now, and also too, you know, be interesting to test after two or three months on that dosage to right. see how much do you have to go up? Yeah, and it probably takes months, right? I'm going to think it. Yeah, I would say months. after, yeah. you know, three, four months on a higher dose and to, to recheck for sure. Right. And sometimes okay. when you're taking 40,000 or more, um, you might want to consider adding a little bit of vitamin K for, um, you know, for better calcium utilization in your body. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that we'll get into the specifics later about what kinds, because I know there's all kinds of vitamins D's and people yeah. probably want to know what's really good. Um, right. <clears throat> Bonnie said that she has had um, levels in the past that were very low, but she was giving a prescription to get it back up, but was taken off when the levels were back up, which uh, that might be unfortunate. So I'm sure you can. can OK, and once that. your levels are up to optimal, then you want to sort of maintain them. Right. Depending on what time of year you had your testing and, you know, and then um, I wouldn't go cold turkey off of vitamin D. Your D levels were low for a reason. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you probably weren't getting enough exposure to the sun. Could be the yes. you know, other colors of your skin. There's lots of different factors. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Leslie mentioned that hers was 23. Oh. So her number was 23. So that's pretty low. And that was Definitely. like a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, and she says now she's taking 2,000 IUs a day. That's might not be enough. No, that's that's no, not uh, enough. interesting because you know, and a lot of people who have their vitamin D levels um, checked, they come back and say well, it's normal, but it's, it's probably in the normal range, but it's not optimal. There's a difference between normal and optimal. Right. We want to optimize our D levels. Right, yeah. exactly. Especially now with everything going on, which you will get into. There's a oh, reason yeah. why we want our immune systems to be top notch right now. Uh, Lisa says she does take vitamin K, and Carmen said the same thing happened to me. So that's what we've got so far. Um, okay. A few people problem. said that they don't take it regularly, sporadically. So. Well, the thing was with vitamin D, because it's a fat soluble uh, vitamin, 
Um, you, if you miss one day, you double up the next day. You can do right. it. Some people well, just that take was one D. of the questions here, actually, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Is there such thing as taking too much vitamin D? Well, for I mean, the threshold goes really high for vitamin D, and I've heard up to eighty to hundred thousand a day yeah. is still safe. But I think the biggest uh, concern is that if you're low in vitamin K, you will uh, your calcium. You know, vitamin D helps bring out the calcium in the blood and deposit where it needs to be. But you need vitamin K for for the, the, to deposit in the right areas. You want vitamin D deposited in your bones. Right. Um, sometimes they're saying high, high doses of vitamin K, you'll get calcification in your arteries or, you know, but, you know the, the research is still pretty weak on that. But um, if you were taking high doses of vitamin D, I would say on this every second day, maybe take a little mixture of vitamin K with it as well. Yeah, that's a, that's really interesting. And like you said, there's not a ton of information out there about for sure what you should do. And so we kind of have to guess a little bit. I know yeah. for me, like I've got, I've got D3s and they're like a thousand each and they don't have any K2 or K3 at all. But then I have another one and it has, and it's like 5,000 I use and it has the K2. The K2. Yeah. So kind of what I've been doing is I've been just kind of mixing it up. I'm sort of using, Perfect. you know, this one brand and a whole bunch of the thousands and then just one of the ones with the K2 once a day yeah, you know, just to get that little bit of K two in there. Do you think yeah. something like that would? You know, be okay? and um, you know, K two is, is you know probably a lot of people on keto get enough K two because you get it through egg yolks and you get it through cheese. Uh, you can also get it some through, um, uh, well, you know, different leafy green vegetables and whatnot. But usually, it's your fatty, it's your your eggs and your cheese that give you a lot of um, K two. So um, yeah, um, you know, just just a bit of a caution. If you know, taking high yeah. doses, you know, a little bit of vitamin K now and again. Yeah. Um, okay. Know, especially, and some people, doesn't if you measure your, what's that? The K2 doesn't have to be on the regular as much no. as the D3. That's right. Yeah here and there with the K2. Okay, that's really that's right. Note. And as far as, you know, um, when you get into high doses of vitamin D, I recommend going for the drops rather than the tablets. Tablets are full of binders, fillers, and flowing agents, and they don't break down as easily, especially as you get older, over 50, you don't have enough um, gastric juices sometimes to break down things. So mm. and I, when I take, if I'm taking 10,000 international units of vitamin D a day, I put 10 drops in the back of my hand and I lift them off. I don't put them in my smoothie because I don't want the little, because it's fat soluble. I don't want it to stick mm. to the container. You want to just put them right underneath you, your tongue like a sublingual? You, oh, absolutely. You can do that too. Okay. And let's yeah. I, but I, I'm, when I'm squirting under my tongue, I can't keep track of how much is going in there <laughs> yeah, right. I right. Yeah, good point. Good yeah. point. Okay, and, awesome. Okay, so another thing we're going to talk about is uh, vitamin D and weight. Um, studies show that higher body mass index and body fat percentage are associated with lower levels of vitamin D. And there's some consensus that we actually store it in fat cells and it's not available for use in our body. And um, there is actually there's a relationship between low vitamin D and then some studies of obesity. And um, they say that there could be a few reasons for that. The obese people tend to have fewer vitamin D foods, um, and it could be that others with you know you know body image problems, you know they don't want to go out in the sun and expose their skin. So there's lots of different ways to sort of we don't know if that's true or not. Sometimes it's just hereditary. Sometimes I'll get into the reasons why you know, some people have a lower vitamin D level. Um, losing weight can also affect your vitamin D levels. It's shown that even small amount of weight loss led to a moderate increased blood level of vitamin D. So maybe when those fat cells are starting to shrink and you're exposing some of the fatty acids and, you know, there's different things contained in the cells, including vitamin D, that your levels start to go up. And there's another study that showed uh, participants who lost at least 15% of their body weight increased their um, nearly... I think it was about three times more vitamin D in their body that was available. Um, and also, um, their study looked at 218 overweight and obese women over a one year period, all were put on a calorie restricted diet and exercise routine. Half the women received vitamin D and the other half uh, received placebo, which is the dummy drug. At the end of the study, researchers found that women who fulfilled their vitamin D requirements as you know, required by the experiment uh, experienced more weight loss, losing an average of seven pounds more than the women who didn't have vitamin D. So that's another okay. reason. To, ding, to ding, think ding. We have a winner. OK, so <laughs> this is a thing that everyone's going to get excited about. Okay? Forget about the bones. Forget about yeah, the, forget the, the immune bones, system. The, and the immune system. No, just kidding. Um, those are super important things, but it can really help us with our weight loss efforts. I mean, how awesome is that, that this is just like an extra bonus on top of the amazing health 
that it's helping with, right? I always love a win-win. So it's really great. You know, I, I think just for that reason alone, anybody who is really struggling with losing weight needs to take more vitamin D. Okay. And then I'm, I mean, when I'm, you know, researching about my, this, it took me years to learn what I'm knowing about different, you know, wellness, um, components but I always look at the research I want to see the research I want to see where it's been published etc but there was another study involving about four forty six hundred elderly elderly women I'm considered that now more than 65 years old oh. and they followed them for four and a half years and higher vitamin D levels were associated with lower weight gains suggesting the lower vitamin D status may predispose to fat accumulation so again, you know, this is uh, there's a big correlation between vitamin D and weight that you wouldn't even think there was, but there is because vitamin D again is a hormone. It's just it's yeah. not just like vitamin. Um, so again, yeah. in short, vitamin D may promote uh, weight loss, improve your overall health at the same time. That's fantastic. That that is a huge takeaway here today. And Lisa just mentioned here that she lost an extra four pounds last week, and she upped her vitamin D. Oh, like she, awesome. after vitamin D when she lost an extra four pounds. So, you know, there's, there's definitely something to this. Wow. Okay. So again, you know, if you know your vitamin D levels, let us know. Um, and let us know if you're taking vitamin D and if so, how much? It'd be interesting to see what the average intake yeah, if is. If anybody else is just coming on here, let us know if you're, if you're actually taking vitamin D, how much you're taking, if you know what your levels are, if you've been tested. Um, and then Carmen was asking about how, how many IU should we take? And, and that's kind of, that's really subjective, isn't it, Debbie? Very. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Health Canada, I think we're recommending a thousand international units. And I think in the U.S. is like 800. The Osteoporosis Society is saying 2000. And if you're looking at uh, people who are more into the wellness area, they're saying 5,000 plus. Well, actually, I just heard um, Dr. Berg say 40,000. He's got yeah. a video out right now that he's suggesting 40,000 because he says everyone is so ridiculously low in vitamin D. I yeah. mean, I can't remember if he said get tested. I think that's always a good yes. idea to get tested so that you know where you're at, right? Yeah, and um, you can get tested, you know, but some doctors are saying, I think even in, you know, in BC, they're saying, unless it's a real good reason for testing your vitamin D, the, the, the College of Physicians and Surgeons say, no, don't do it. I think, oh, this is such a great test, you know, and then as we get into this little talk a little bit, you know, know why, you know, the benefits of high vitamin D are so essential. And I don't quite understand why they won't test for vitamin D. And I know that the lab that I use for my hormone testing, um, they do vitamin D testing and it comes in a little, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's, sorry. That's my COVID test. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> COVID, <test. laughs> COVID antibody test let me see okay this is your uh, hormone blood spot test so you know you can just poke your little finger yeah. a couple drops of blood on a block paper and then you get your vitamin d right? what's that they can just order that test online like if they yeah. can't yeah. yeah on my website i have it available or you can oh. just email me oh, great. okay so yeah, me yeah. And, um, it on your website which i will I will actually pop it in here so that you guys have it. And then you can order that um, test. Now, even in the States, Debbie, like it doesn't matter. If oh, it's yeah, because the lab I use is in Oregon. Okay, good. Okay, well, you keep talking and I'll I'll put this in the thing here. Okay, so, and, and you know, anybody who's you know, had a hormone consult with me, all, don't, they never escape my vitamin D lecture. So, again, it's, it's so important <laughs> or so many different thing. <clears throat> okay, so where do we get our vitamin D? And most of us know we get it from exposure to the sun, but we also can get it into food from food. But only about ten percent of the um, vitamin D comes from food. <clears throat> you know, it's from fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, um, beef liver if you like liver, cheese, egg yolks, fortified foods such as you know dairy products and some you know orange juices. But I know people on keto are not going that route. But we're certainly getting enough eggs, and we're getting cheese. Um, uh, dairy, there's, you know, there's vitamin D and uh, so much of the food that we consume on keto, but vitamin D in the sun. <clears throat> okay. So you, you have to think about, um, latitude that you live in, you know, and actually I went to the American Academy of Anti-Aging, uh, conference one time and they're talking about vitamin D deficiencies. And a member of this one lecturer from California, a medical doctor, he says he tests his vitamin D levels on all his patients. And he says 75% of his patients from California, the LA area were low in vitamin D. And everybody was kind of like, really, you know, I can't believe that. But he says, you got to think about people are um, when they're going to work, they're in their cars. Uh, when they do go out in the sun, they put sunscreen on. Um, and, you know, if you've got a darker skin, um, 
you will have lower vitamin D levels as well. So um, when your skin is exposed to sunlight, it, vitamin D is actually made from cholesterol and the sun's ultraviolet lights take cholesterol in the skin uh, cells and provide the energy for vitamin D synthesis to actually occur. Um, now I'm gonna, uh, the midday, I think member, um, in midday is the best time to get sunlight. At noon, the sun is at its highest point and that's UVB and that's what's really important is your UVB rays are the most intense. That means you need less time to make the, um, in the sun to actually make vitamin D. And there's a, a study I'm gonna just recite here. Studies conducted in the UK, 13 minutes of midday sunlight exposure during summer three times per week is enough to maintain healthy levels among Caucasian adults. Another study found that 30 minutes of midday summer sun exposure in Oslo, Norway was equivalent to consuming 10 to 20,000 international units of vitamin D. So, and then again, when you go out in the sun in midday, don't use sunscreen. You're, you're not gonna burn within 20 minutes. That is so, that I am so happy to hear that because as I'm sure people in the group know, because I've posted this a few times and I got a few hand slaps. Um, I love to go outside midday, like around lunchtime or whatever. I go out with my uh, bone broth protein drink and that's like my lunch or whatever I'm having. And I will sit out in the sun for like, you know, usually it's like 20 minutes or something like that, um, depending on, you know, what I've got going on or whatever, 20 minutes, sometimes 30. It really depends on the day, but that is my favorite time to go out there. And I, I honestly try to do it every day that I can that I don't have something else going on or whatever. And yeah, I did have a, a couple of people say, you should be wearing your sunblock. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope, I'm not wearing my sunblock because I'm trying to get vitamin D. That's what that's what I want to do. That's my whole point. Yeah. Of being out here. I'm not a big fan of sunblock um, anyways. Um, there's a lot of chemicals. This is a chemical. We're putting totally. the sunblock onto the biggest organ of our body, which is our skin. Right. So um, sometimes you can get a really good zinc titanium, um, blend um that doesn't go on white you don't want to look like casper but uh, you know i would if you do use sunscreen try to go to the ones with less um you know i don't i don't like to say contaminants but they are for your body they're not they're they're not good for our body. So well, the health things. food store has a few options, um, right. you know, they don't have a bunch of parabens and a bunch of chemicals or whatever. And I will have that on hand. If I know that I'm going to be out for a long period of time, I'm going for some big hike or I'm down in Mexico and it's really hot yeah. or whatever, obviously I don't want to burn my skin. Not no, no, no. Obviously you don't want to damage your skin. Um, so mm -hmm. I will use it in that time. But for just the everyday and the short periods of time or whatever, I never put on sunblock as a regular. Right. And what we're saying is we are not doctors. We're giving our opinions here. So I don't want to, I don't, yeah, don't want to, I'm not, I'm not saying go out there and get burnt. Yeah. You know, because that's, the, you know, you're damaging your cells. Good. Yes. Burn. So you just want to, you know, but 15, 20 minutes without sunscreen is not going to burn you unless you've got huge hypersensitivity to the sun. Right. Um, okay. Right. So what can affect your vitamin D levels? Okay. Remember I said, it's not just the food that you're eating, the sun exposure. Mm -hmm. It's the color of the skin can really affect the yeah. vitamin D levels. Darker skinned people have, um, have more melanin and it's a compound that protects the skin from skin damage and it reduces the amount of UVB light that actually is absorbed into the cells. So remember you need UVB to start that vitamin D synthesis. Darker skinned people need uh, more time in the sunlight to make the same amount of vitamin D as lighter skinned people. It's estimated that dark, darker skinned people need anywhere from 30 to three hours longer to get sufficient vitamin D wow. compared to lighter skinned people. This is the major reason why darker skinned people have a higher risk of deficiency. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit more when we talk about immune system, okay? Okay. Now, another thing we just mentioned, sunscreen. Um, uh, um, let's see, there's a doctor, Harry Lim, he's, um, Department of Dermatology, Henry Ford Health System. And he is the former president of the American Academy of Dermatology. He says this sunscreen is applied to a thick in a thick layer, it can effectively block sunlight and cause a lack of vitamin D synthesis in the skin. He says a thick layer is defined as maybe equivalent of one ounce or the size of one golf ball for the full body. So if you're using about an ounce to, to cover your whole body, you're you've got too much sunscreen on. Okay, and um, latitude. In northern countries such as Canada, northern USA, uh, Europe, uh, uh, our climate means um, UVB li levels are and sunlight are too weak, four to six months of the year to make any vitamin D naturally. So, you know, you might have um, 
uh, like blue skies in the middle of uh, January. And, you know, I know like places in Alberta, they have nice blue skies, um, you know, it, it, rather than the haze that we hear in Vancouver. But you're not getting any vitamin D exposure whatsoever. You don't have the UVB rays um, to produce vitamin D in your skin. Now, again, uh, I thought just yeah. sun was sun. Like if the sun was out, it has really? to be a certain degree, and I can't remember if it's like 65 Fahrenheit or something around that mark, and up to actually be there's enough UVB rays. Ah. Yeah. Wow. So there's a reason why all Canadians go down to the states when we can. Like I know there's a reason why we go down because we need that sun. That's need right. That sun. You know, isn't it crazy when you when you're you know especially when you're from a cooler climate? You know, we don't have snow 12 months of the year in BC. We don't have snow. You know, maybe you have a little bit more in your area than we do. Right. But as soon as you, you you get on a plane or you drive down to California uh, and you're exposed to the sun, you just feel like, oh, oh, I know, I know. It, it feels so like, good. Oh. Yeah, it feels so good. Yeah, it's just amazing energy. Yeah, and another thing again we mentioned earlier, what affects our D levels is your weight. Fat, soft, fat tissues just sop up that vitamin D, and they like almost like they've uh, you know closed the door and they threw away the key. Wow. The D's are. Okay. Just, yeah. So, um, uh, age, I think they mentioned this, but compared to younger people, other older people have lower levels of vitamin D in the skin. Um, because the UVB, UVB actually converts in the, there's a precursor in the skin. And as we're getting older, our skin doesn't sort of react the same way our cells age and we don't have much conversion in their skin. So older people definitely uh, need more vitamin D. Um, and, the other thing that's really is interesting, interesting, and I always talk about this when I do my hormone consults, I always ask questions about the gut. Do you have gut issues? Do you have GERD? Do you have heartburn? Uh, do you have bloating and belching and whatnot after you eat? Chances are if the questions are, are answered, yes, you have gut issues. And the vitamin D that's consumed in a food as, or as a supplement uh, is absorbed in, in the part of the small intestine immediately downstream from the stomach. Um, stomach juices, pancreatic secretions, bile uh, from the liver, et cetera, um, and the integrity of the wall of the gut um, can have all influence on how much absor absorption there is of vitamin D. Now, wow. I, I tell women this all the time, you've got gut issues, you have to work on your gut. You have to repair the gut for better absorption. Women or in anyone, men, woman and men who are on protein proton pump inhibitors, those are the um, medications for GERD, for reflux, um, their absorption of nutrients go downhill fast. Oh, man. Yeah, so repairing the gut rather than just putting yeah. a band-aid on it is very, very essential. So I just want to mention that, so this is why every month in the group, I run a three-day bone broth cleanse. This is exactly why. Yes, it's super great for weight loss. Not going to lie, it's really awesome to break a plateau and it really helps with weight loss, but it's working on healing our gut. When we do this for three days, or even when you can fit it in whenever you can, it helps repair your gut so much. And then just as a sidebar, I just I have to say it. I'd be remiss if I didn't say it. Cutting out grains. When we eat the grains, it is destroying our gut. Grains and sugar. Grains and sugar. So grain, take out grains and sugar. Do the three-day bone broth cleanse once a month. Keep bone broth in your life all the time. And when I say bone broth, I mean actual from bones, not, you know, meat broth, which is super cheap in the store. Make it yourself, whatever. Use my bone broth protein powder. The point is... Keep this in your life all the time and you're constantly building up. And I'm sure Debbie's got a lot of really great ideas too about gut health. That that will be a whole other topic. Well, I was just going to say, we can spend a whole hour talking you, about that. Uh, and we definitely will do it. But I just yeah. wanted to touch on it since we were just talking about it, how important it is to be doing these things. So, right. And there's great link between gut, uh, you know, when, you're, when your gut's not working properly um, and weight gain. So yes. this is a topic we need to discuss. Absolutely. I'm putting that on the list as, as our priority. I think gut health, we definitely need to talk about that next time. Okay. So um, again, um, when we talked about, when, you first, when people first think about vitamin D, we think about our bones. And of course, it's very necessary for the utilization of calcium to for bone density. So that's that's one of the first things you think of um, when it comes to you know why we take vitamin D. But um, there's study. I'm going to sort of recite some uh, little blurbs of different clinical trials that I looked at when I was preparing this. You know, vitamin D has been shown to decrease the risk of fractures in elderly men. Again, elderly is greater than 65. Postmenopausal women and the risk of falls. 
of community dwelling seniors. So you think about not only does it help your bones, but it can help decrease the falls for people in care homes. Um, I mean, I mean, again, older people don't go in the sun. Uh, they don't absorb the vitamin D as well in their skin. Their diet is probably not full of vitamin D. Um, so I mean, falling and breaking a hip as a senior is devastating. I mean, they, you know, it's months to, re, uh, to recover and frequently, you know, they don't recover to the same extent they were pre-fall. Now, in recent studies, uh, several associations between low levels of vitamin D and neuropsychiatric disorders have begun to surface. These disorders are including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS, epilepsy, schizophrenia, and autism. Now, interestingly enough, when you think about MS, the highest incidence of MS in the world is in Canada especially the northern latitude. I remember talking about this a while a, a years ago in a lecture I was given, and somebody who, who worked with the MS Association said, you know, the highest incidence is, is, is um, you know, the northern part of British Columbia, northern part of Canada, Alaska, et cetera. And, and she said, you know, I was, she was up there for a conference one time. She goes, in every corner there was an MS clinic. So you think about it, you know, and Finland, U.S., Canada, Sweden, and Iceland have the highest rates yeah. of death from dementia. Yeah, I would think like Iceland and yeah. you know all all the well, you know Norway's not so much because, um they, they, they have so much fish, fish too. a lot of fatty foods yeah, yeah fatty a lot fish. of fatty fish yeah and you know there's not a lot of obesity yeah. in in Norway too I was there not too long ago I was yes. surprised it was just like a picture of health when you walked around Norway it was just I whoa. know isn't that and, and isn't that interesting to show that how you can overcome yes they live in the northern latitudes or whatever so you would think that they would have the most, but their style of eating is so different from us. They don't right. naturally, I mean, I'm sure it's coming in a little bit more now with the younger generation, but it has always been like my, my grandma was Swedish. My grandpa was Norwegian and everything was fatty fish, fatty fish, meat, eggs. And you know what they don't have? Very, very little in the way of, you know, just a little bit of potato here and there or whatever, but very little grains, very they little. They don't grow grain. They, don't, they, go, they can't grow wheat in that right. latitude. It just right. doesn't take. So they use right. a lot of rye um, and substitutes, but, they, you know, there's very little bit of grain intake in the northern part of that. Exactly. And so here they are. You would think they, they would have the worst situation when it comes to MS and all those kind of things that go with vitamin, low vitamin D, and yet they don't. Yeah. So it just shows we can change it. It doesn't matter where we live. We can totally right. change it with our diet and with our supplementation. Right. And then uh, research has targeted that increase in vitamin D as a mechanism for improved mood. And we talked about seasonal affective disorder. Seasonal affective disorder is, you know, hits you sort of when the days become shorter and you don't have the sun anymore. Some people buy those blue lights or the ultraviolet lights that, you know, to help uh, them their mood uh, improve. And... Um, there was actually a study led by researchers of the University of Georgia with low vitamin D levels were at a greater risk of seasonal, seasonal affective disorder. So these are university studies that they're doing and associating vitamin D with, you know, things like seasonal affective disorder. And you think, okay, okay, I'm not a conspiracy. Okay, I'm going to talk about this. You know, why don't, why isn't there more focus on vitamin D? When I get through some of these studies, you're going to think, well, why isn't my doctor taking, telling me to take vitamin D? Mm -hmm. Vitamin D is not patentable. You're not going to see big advertisements like you do for statin yeah. drugs or, you know, blood pressure drugs on the you know, TV. Frequently, you see these pharmaceutical ads. It's not patentable, so there's no real money in it. Um, yes. You know, and again, the vitamin. Um, and then if the doctors are told, being told by their association, you can't, you know, or their their HMO or whatever it may be in the U.S. that you can't order vitamin D levels because it's too expensive and it's man that. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's just so doing a disservice to the public that's, as far as health. That, that's an overall umbrella topic to do with so many things to do with health, really. Yeah. I mean, if they can't patent it, if they can't make big money on it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, again, we're talking about um, vitamin D. Earlier, I mentioned vitamin D in pregnancy and the importance of taking vitamin D in pregnancy. Studies compared women who took 400 international units, which used to be the recommended daily allowance, and those who took 4,000 international units. And those who took 4,000 were half as likely to develop gestational diabetes in their pregnancy. Oh, my gosh. Pregnancy related high blood pressure or preeclampsia. Wow. Pre you know, that's when your protein in your urine go is there, and, you know, you, you have to have that baby soon if you have 
preeclampsia. Um, oh, and nice also more likely like, to have, are less likely to have uh, low birth babies or premature babies. Wow. Wow. Yeah. But, and uh, wouldn't that be so great to have that information, you know, before you get pregnant or like in the early stages of your pregnancy or something, that would have been really good to know. Oh, yeah. So important for, for fat, uh, for, you know, omega-3s, vitamin D and folic acid when you're in pregnancy, yeah. even before you think about getting pregnant. Sure. You want to make sure your vitamin D level intake is good, your your fish oil intake is good, and your um, folic acid. Folic acid will de decrease the risk for spina bifida. Wow. Okay, and, and that spina, spina bifida uh, disorder or malformation comes in an early part of a pregnancy. So, wow. Yeah. And you know what? I just want to mention here because she reminded me. So my friend Kim, she's in the chat here. Um, she actually produces her own um, brand of vitamin D and it's awesome. And it has a K2 right in it. And um, it's awesome. I have used that myself. So Kim, if you, I don't know if you, it's possible for you to pop in here um, your link, but if not, at least what the brand is. So people, cause I know you sell on Amazon, so you could pop that in here too. So that people can awesome. it. good. Yeah. It's a real good one. Good. Yeah. So okay. That'd be really interesting because then, you know, is it a thousand I use per drop? Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't okay. know uh, what it is because I'm not actually taking it right this second. So I don't have the bottle right in front of me, but I have taken it. And um, because I can't, we can't get it here in Canada unless you can tell me otherwise. So I was traveling in the States and I ordered it when I was in the States. And now I can't even get to the border to even pick up anything from the States because of all the closures and everything. Yeah. Um, I'm, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's a capsule, but the, some capsules are really good. Like I know what you oh, said about the fine. liquid yeah. and the liquid is great, but like anything, when I take my supplements and a lot of them are capsules, I'm always aware of what is in there. I'm always checking to see if there's any fillers or, you know, how they process or whatever. So, I mean, I don't, we can't say that all capsules are not as good and all liquids are good. I think you just have to really look and see. For oh, yeah. the brand, I mean, it's right? all to do how it breaks down. Cause I know I was doing a consult the other day yeah. with one of my hormone ladies and you know, I always go through their supplements and I look at the brand and I look it up right away. I want to see what the extra ingredients are. And one was wax and shellac shellac <laughs> oh goodness yeah and it probably didn't it probably didn't say shellac you oh, had to say shellac. It it says, it shellac oh it actually said shellac. <laughs> okay, well that's actually surprising usually it comes out as a like a weird word and you think yeah, that's right so medically or whatever and you look it up and you go oh crap it's actually like paint thinner or something i don't yeah, know exactly you, you do have to watch which is which is why none of my products have any of those things in it it's all clean and natural with no fillers and no crap things oh yeah it's yeah. elite elite is the brand e-l-i-t-e -E. And um, from Elite Source Labs, yeah, yeah, really good. So okay. I was I was taking them, and when I get back down to the states, I will buy them again. They, right, they and you know, really Canada good. Health Canada is uh, limits the amount of uh, uh, international units per serving, which is a drop. Yes, from drops that was another reason thousand. why I was trying to buy them from. Yeah, the in the states, you can buy uh, five thousand international units, ten thousand international units. You know, you know, yeah. to take one of them. Yeah. Okay, so another um, study that I was found really interesting over the past ten years, several researchers found associated between extremely low vitamin D levels, chronic and general pain that doesn't respond to treatment. Wow. So you have aches and pains. You don't know why you're getting them. Um, you know, just try up in your vitamin D and see how that works over the next couple of months. And there's a um, studies have long established a connection between low vitamin D levels and inflammatory diseases, uh, fibromyalgia, anything that has to do with inflammation. And the mm -hmm. uh, researchers know that improving the vitamin D can help actually reduce inflammation in your body. Simple, awesome. you know, simple fix. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, it's not to say, you know, it's going to work for everybody, but it's, it's really worth a try if you've got an inflammatory process going in your body. Um, you know, first of all, removing the grains is the first thing I tell my people, grains and sugar, and then up your vitamin D. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is interesting, too. Uh, High-dose vitamin D supplementation can reduce the prevalence of PMS and, and painful periods as well as um, has a positive effects on physical and psychological symptoms of PMS. So if you've got a, a you know, remember, you know, teenagers can be low in vitamin D too. So if you've got a, you know, cranky little woman, you know, in your house that's, you know. Even uh, when we get older, we can get cranky. <laughs> so up that vitamin D for, for PMS. And of course, in perimenopause, PMS symptoms seem to come, come back and, and haunt you and into your family as well. Okay. Another thing you know, to do with weight, hypothyroidism. This was so interesting. Patients with low 
Yeah. Functioning thyroids suffer from low vitamin D levels um, uh, and actually low calcium levels. Uh, so the significantly associated degree and severity of uh, hypothyroidism. So if you um, have a hypothyroid and you know your hypothyroid, I'd definitely increase your vitamin D and watch. I would even recommend when you have hypothyroid, you look at your serum calcium levels see whether or not you need to take that vitamin k for sure and of course you know with your vitamin d that is really interesting we have a lot of hypothyroidism um people that have talked about it in the group i know you know i used to have it and now i'm i don't um and that's really interesting because vitamin d wasn't specifically part of my plan um when i was working with my naturopathic doctor and i was you know, doing my thing or whatever too. Um, but now that I think about it, I was actively increasing my vitamin D at that time because I started to realize I just wasn't taking enough just like on my own. So I started to increase it. So that's really interesting because that probably helped. Um, and oh, I didn't yeah. even realize it at the time. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that suffer with that in our group. And um, that's something to take note if you're hypothyroidism. Person. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean that is a common. You know, hypothyroidism is probably the most under underdiagnosed condition there is out there. You know, because they they don't measure it properly when you get your blood test. They do TSH. They don't do T4 and T3. Um, so you don't really know if you're hypothyroid. You know, you know you could come back with normal TSH and still be hypothyroid. That's another topic, again, isn't it? That's that's <laughs> another one. We're adding it to the list. I actually have quite a list of different things that we can talk about. I'm just going to read a question that's here, Debbie, since it's here, mm -hmm. and I'll just ask you. Um, Carmen asks, um, when we're talking about supplements, probably in general, not just vitamin D, some don't break down. And mm -hmm. she used to test her vitamins by putting them in a glass of water and some would still be like completely solid the next morning. I know I used to do that test. Um, myself personally, like I don't know if that's applicable for every single vitamin. I know my um, MCT oil soft gels, which isn't really a vitamin, but it's an oil, but the capsule, it's like you have to have something hot or, or the, the gelatin isn't going to break down or you need your stomach acids. Stomach to break down. Acid. Right. Yeah. So would that be applicable here that some no. would? Yeah. I think, you know, the water is probably not a um, great replica of what's happening in our gut. Right. Because um, you do need stomach acid to break things down. Right. But again, if it's a tablet and it's full of binders, fillers, and flowing agents, it's not going to break down water or right. stomach acid. And again, right. um, as we get older, especially over age 50, our, our gastric... Um, enzymes decrease yeah. gallbladder sometimes are an issue so I, I always recommend people over 50 take a digestive enzyme at least yes. the heaviest meal a day i was just going to say that yeah yeah take a yeah. digestive enzyme automatically just helps us to to get more nutrients out of our food and stuff yeah you know oh yeah. absolutely and another really great study and this is uh, i think you know you can just research vitamin d and cancer it says studies demonstrate that three quarters of people with a variety of cancers have low vitamin D levels. So three quarters of people with cancer have low vitamin D levels and the lowest levels are associated with more advanced cancers. Um, a study that was conducted in the University of Finland stated that anti-cancer effects of vitamin D are especially pronounced in the prevention and treatment of colon cancer and blood cancers. Wow. And there's studies showing that postmenopausal women, if their vitamin D levels are optimal, they have a significantly decreased risk of breast cancer. Wow. Yeah, and there's a, a chart they looked at a while back that's saying optimal vitamin D levels can decrease your risk of all cancers, prostate cancer, skin cancer, by 60 to 80 percent. My gosh. Like, that, to me, it's phenomenal. It, it blows your mind. It, it yeah. literally blows your mind and something that is so easy to do. This right. is not a difficult thing, you know, to take more vitamin D, to get out in the sun a little bit. It's really yeah. not hard, but it is important to know what your levels are. I think we can, because I think like I've seen a lot of people in here that they're saying how much that they're taking, but yet their levels are still really low. So right. I think it still is very important. We almost have to look at it like, you know, we're dosing ourselves, you know, we're carefully dosing ourselves to try to get that number up. I myself right. am going to be testing myself. I might um, talk about it in the group and stuff. I have the same kit um, I got from Debbie. And so I'm going to be testing myself. I have the feeling that I'm low. Um, the last time that I did it, I was definitely low. And this is someone who actively takes a lot of vitamin D every day and I get out in the sun as often as I can and mine is is low. So I think it's just really important to not just be thinking, well, I, I take one a day, so I guess I'm covered. That's yeah. not going to be good enough. For the kind of studies that, that Debbie is talking about here, that is not going to be good enough. You need to know what your numbers are and you need to supplement. 
again, like everybody's different. You know, we can say, oh, everybody takes 10,000 a day. It might be too much for you. It might not be right. enough for you. Uh, had, again, there's so many variables, you know, is how much are you, know, are you eating as far as you know, you know, fatty fish, et cetera, that contains your vitamin D. How much exposure do you have in the sun? What's the color right. of your skin? How old yes. are you? There's so many different yes. factors. And what you just said about digestive enzymes, like depending on our gut and gut health, right? So if yeah. you've got really good, strong gut health and maybe you're taking digestive enzymes, you're really going to absorb these nutrients. If your gut isn't strong, you could take like, I don't know, like 40,000 a day and it might not make as much difference because your gut health isn't right. good and enough. I wonder how many how many people who listen to this are on a proton pump inhibitor for GERD, for reflux, like your Zantax, and, and there's so many different types out there. Maybe now, you guys could pop are, in the chat if you're on any of these things. Yeah, um, your safe. magnesium oh, levels are going to be affected. You know, your D levels are going to be affected. There's so many things affected by by putting the Band-Aid on the problem, you know, and that's really what the proton pump inhibitors are, is the Band-Aid so you don't get that heartburn and re re yes. reflux. And hopefully, yeah. you know, after being on keto for a while, that starts to improve. And a lot of times it does improve because you are improving your gut integrity. It, it, it definitely, eating keto definitely will help. Also in the group, and I, I talk about this all the time, um, but you can find it in the units, um, unit four keto. Mm, goodness, I'm on the spot here. It's uh, unit for um, good health keto style. I have one particular article in there about the digestive drink and it's apple cider vinegar and it's a little bit of lemon juice and then some fiber and then you drink that and it helps your digestion immensely like it's incredible people that have said that they've had the worst heartburn ever that they were on all kinds of medications or whatever and i said look at just try this i'm not saying going off your medications but just take this and as you're starting to notice feeling better start cutting back I can't tell you how many people that have come to me said they're fully off their medications. They don't take anything for their um, flaming heartburn, which is what I used to suffer from. And now they just drink this and it's amazing and it's all natural and it's good for you in so many other ways too. So please look that up um, in unit four if you guys are interested in, in doing it naturally. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And then you know, again, we're talking about, uh, you know, immunity and, you know, vitamin D. Um, there's a, a study showing that vitamin D reduces the odds of developing respiratory infection by approximately 42% in people who have had low vitamin D levels at baseline. So they increased their, their vitamin D levels and their respiratory infection rate over you know a couple of years went down by 42%. You know, so simple. Okay, so I'm trying to sort of leave the the best to last here. Oh. Everybody's, um, you know, worried about COVID. And, you know, it's, it's a frightening thing. You know, and um, it is. And once again, I'm just going to quickly remind everybody that we are not doctors. I just want to make sure that you guys know we are presenting. Debbie is presenting such amazing information. And most of it is from studies and stuff that are public that you, you can find out there. But we just want to reiterate that we are not doctors. We're passing on the information so that you can do what you feel is right for you. Bring it up with your doctor. Bring it up with your naturopathic doctor. That's just what Absolutely. I want to Yeah. When I think about, um, you know, COVID and, and I think about flu season in general, you know, when COVID wasn't even, you know, around, I, you know, would come, come into flu season, I would tell people, okay, increase your vitamin D and your, your zinc, um, um, you want to optimize your immune system because we are going yeah. into, um, you know, flu season. And, you know, again, in that previous study I just mentioned how respiratory infections went down like 41% because the vitamin D levels are optimized. <clears throat> again, what you want to do with COVID is increase your immune system. You know, we should be able to, you know, to fight this, you know, efficiently with you yes. know, a good immune system. Not everybody's yeah. going to fight it off, but there mm -hmm. was a study that was published in August in the Journal of American Association. Um, 489 people who had tested positive for COVID-19 between March and April, who had been tested for vitamin D deficiencies in the prior year, they found that 19% of the vitamin D deficient people tested positive for COVID-19 compared to only 12% of the D sufficient people. Now, efficient, mm -hmm. sufficient it wasn't even optimal. It wasn't even optimal. No. Right. So <clears throat> that was quite a bit of a difference, I think. And uh, mm -hmm. and um, there's another study call, um, conducted by a Dr. David Meltzer from the University of Chicago. Patients with likely deficient vitamin D status had nearly double the risk of uh, testing positive for COVID-19. So to me, that's just it's no it's a no brainer. Um, you know, and there's if you just uh, uh, Google uh, COVID. 
and vitamin D, you'll come up with several studies that actually, you know, were conducted at universities. Um, and as another uh, st stated that further research would be especially pertinent since uh, both African American and Hispanic population not only have disproportionate amounts of morbidity and mortality from COVID, but are, uh, they also have high rates of vitamin D deficiency. So again, you yeah, think about uh, what we've known about COVID, they've hit some really, um, you know, the, 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 the African American um, population has been hit hard. The yeah. Hispanic uh, population has hit hard. They have dark skin. Yes. It doesn't matter where you live. They the vitamin D as well. That's right. Dark, you know, darker skin people need so much more vitamin yeah. D than, you know, people with lighter skin. Right. That's, that's such a good point. And I have also, I can't, I can't cite studies. I don't have them in front of me, but I follow all kinds of really amazing doctors and some are keto, some are not keto, whatever. And there's so much information coming out now. There was this one doctor, like I'd literally never heard of him before. I don't know how I found him on YouTube or whatever, but he kind of specializes in immune system type things or whatever. And he was saying that there are some very recent studies being done on vitamin D and COVID that were just incredible. Like he, like I could see the look on his face. He goes, this is mind blowing. This is absolutely mind blowing what he was reading there. Like he even looked like he was surprising himself because he said, I've just never seen such numbers before of what a difference it makes to have good optimal levels of vitamin D in your system compared to if you don't. And he was citing all these different, you know, things from all over the world. It was incredible. Oh, um, yeah. It, Why are we, we're, we're not hearing about this. I don't know. We're hearing exactly. about hydroquinone and we're hearing about other different things. Uh, yeah. But, um, okay, I'm going to, I mean, we only have about five minutes left, but I'm going to just talk about, and I have to read this because I don't want to get this wrong at all. Right. This is my favorite clinical trial to date. This is a study that was um, to support vitamin D therapy for COVID-19 was conducted at the University Research in Spain and published in the Journal of Steroid Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. And this was published just August 29th, 2020. This is a small sample size, but the study was really well designed. The sample size of the study was small, but the design was strong. Researchers randomly allocated 76 confirmed cases of COVID-19 into either a um, oral vitamin D group or a non-oral vitamin D, uh, and they still got exactly the same treatment, whether it's antibiotics or what, whatever they treated with. Everybody got the same treatment for vitamin D. The only difference was, or sorry, the treatment for COVID, but the only difference was one group, uh, 50 patients got vitamin D, and 26 of uh, the control group got no vitamin D. Now, results revealed that 13 out of the 26 patients, these are the 26 placebo group, um, in the, um, with no vitamin D were admitted to ICU. So 13 out of the 26 patients with no vitamin D were admitted to ICU and two actually died in the end. In the vitamin D group, and then there's, remember there's 50 patients now in the vitamin D group, only one out of the 50 required ICU, ICU admission and then not one died. To me, that is, wow. even though it's a small um, study, uh, it was really well designed. That is, that is incredible. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. Yeah. I, I heard about that one too. And um, I, the same as you, it's like, why is this not being screamed of, on the mountaintops, right? It's right. like you have to search for this information. You have to find certain doctors that will talk about it. Um, it's, it blows my mind, actually. I don't, I don't get it at all other than the money part, but yeah. you know, are they scared that if they talk about this, people won't get vaccines or something? I don't know. I don't, I don't see any correlation with that at all. You would think no. people would want to prevent, you know, it's not yeah. going to stop them from right. vaccine if that's what they want to do. Um, yeah, that that is incredible. I think there are so many reasons for us to have optimal levels of vitamin D. I mean, if we just recap, you know, it's weight loss, um, hormones, amazing immune system. I mean, these are all feeling awesome. I don't know if um, any of you have had se seasonal disorder. Um, I've had it before and it's awful. It's, it's like, you know, for us that live in Canada, it affects us more, but it's like in the winter time and you just feel really down and you feel, I, you're like, it makes no sense why I would feel so sad. I would feel so, it's like, there's nothing going on. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing in your life. You can't pinpoint it. 
And that's what this is, is low levels of vitamin D quite often. And it's like that right there changed my life. That was originally why I started taking more vitamin D years ago was for that particular reason, not realizing how good it was for so many other things, because this was nothing that my doctor ever told me. There was nothing my doctor ever suggested testing. This was just something that I found out through my own research. I'm always reading things or whatever. And I heard it somewhere. And I thought that makes so much sense yeah. that this would help me. And it was immediate. I'm talking like from, from the time of feeling super sad and low in the winter, raising up my vitamin D levels and, and not even the amounts that I take now. I mean, back then it was probably like, you know, I probably took like a thousand a day and thought that was like phenomenal or whatever. And even that made such a huge difference yeah. in my mood such a huge difference like like changed my life completely i never i never have that problem anymore and then that just spurred me on to learning more about it and all the other different ways that you have talked about like it's so so good for us yeah yeah I mean, it's just a simple fix for so many different things yeah yeah, yeah and exactly. i think i really encourage everyone to try to get your vitamin d levels checked and then you know um you sort of work on them you know, it's going to take a few months, especially going into winter, but you need to, yeah. you know, again, if you don't supplement every day, double up the next day. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a fat soluble vitamin. And then if you, if we were to do, um, you know, how often would you recommend that we get checked, you know, just to see, cause it takes a while. It's not like you're going to take it today and then get tested tomorrow and go, woohoo, I'm at optimal level. Right. So it's going to take a while. So maybe like three times a year, would you I would say that? twice a year, three to twice three, year. Two, yeah, maybe two to three yeah. times a year. Yeah. Initially, maybe test three, four months after you've increased your dose, right. and then um, see what you are doing. And then, if you need to increase some more, um, you know, right. maybe test another four or five months. Yeah, right, exactly. And what we were talking about before, when Bonnie had said that, you know, she got to her optimal level or what, what her doctor felt was optimal level, and um, then he took her off of it because she was there. That's not what we want to do. We want to keep on. We don't necessarily need to take as high. We can lower it a little bit if that's what you want to do. But then, like, keep taking it so that you can maintain. Right. It's like it's like iron when women's you know reportedly have a low yeah. iron, which is, you know a lot, a lot of women do and don't know it. Get your iron checked at the same time as you get your vitamin D checked. <laughs> um, no once you optimize your vitamin D or your, or your iron levels, you have to mean you have to actually supplement for a full year to make to actually you know fill up yes. the stores of iron. Yes. So. Yeah, I don't, don't stop just because you got there. Myself. Uh, somebody was asking here, uh, Dina asked, how much do you take? We did talk about that before, Dina. It's really a personal thing. Um, or, or if you're asking how, mu how much do we take? Again, it's personal based on what we're trying to do and what we get our levels up or whatever. But like, I can tell you for sure, like I'll be taking like 40,000 IUs a day in the winter time. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test myself. And by the way, Dr. Berg just talked about this. You can look up Dr. Berg, vitamin D, he just posted about it about the other day. And he was suggesting 40,000 a day. Um, she can watch that. Um, what was I going to say? So yeah, I'm going to be testing myself soon. And I'll post about it in the group. I'm going to find out what my levels are. And then based on what my levels are, that will determine how much I'm going to take a day. In my mind, I'm thinking 40,000. But if my, you know, levels are are very, very bad, I may have to up that. And if my levels are really good, then I might be able to like go down a little bit. So I'll, I'll decide at that right. time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so Dina, Dina, it's really, it's really a personal thing. But um, minimally, but, I think, you know, come winter, we should be doing 4,000 plus. Oh, yeah. Per Easily. day, not per week. day. Because I saw somebody in here said that they do five thousand a week. That's that's not no. Gonna that's be. that's like seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred international units a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. I don't know if anybody else has any questions. But I'm just going to quickly look. Um, we will also be having a watch party at five o'clock, and so we'll replay this, and then um, I will be on for sure. I'm not sure, Debbie, if you have time to I'll be try on. To be on, party. yeah. But if you do, then that's great, and then we can answer questions on the watch party as well. Um, once again, oh, once again, what is Debbie's site uh, for the test? So it's um, the www.thehormonenurse.com. And I did, if you scroll back, you can see it. Um, I can't I can't type and talk at the same time, yeah. but once I'm off here, I'll type it in one more time so that you guys have it. Yeah, so yeah, so I think I think that's probably about it. We're, we're at an hour and, but these talks are so great. Um, it's, it's just such valuable information. And Debbie, you always share with us 
real science based. That's what I really like about it. It's all great to talk about how good this is or whatever. And that's that's kind of like more more my thing. I get really excited and passionate of, about natural health, but to have the science and the studies to back it up. You know what I mean? I think that's like so powerful and you're so good at that. You're so good at knowing yeah. all the stuff that's out there. Well, yeah. I enjoyed the time. The hour went so quickly, didn't it? Oh it does. Gosh. Oh, anytime, anytime Debbie and I are talking, the time goes by really fast. And we will have definitely more talks. I think our next one should be about gut health. I, that one's come up quite a few times. We've already done one on hormone health. You can find that in the units. I saved that in, in uh, unit seven. If you missed our talk on hormone health, that was amazing. And Debbie, anyone can reach out to you anytime if, if they just have questions and stuff right so right. debbie debbie is in the group so whatever group you're in here i actually have two groups in here today and debbie's in both of those groups and you can just click on her um little profile picture and then you can talk to her on messenger or you can talk to her debbie at the hormone nurse.com and i will pop that into the comments after um debbie is just absolutely amazing so thank you so much oh thank you for having for me coming on yep i think we, you've got a setup really great for winter i think we perfect. all have a really good plan yeah good timing for this little talk yes perfect timing all right thanks so okay. much and you guys all have a good day and i'll talk to you guys in the group bye now bye. hey guys before you go, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we have a new video posted. Also down in the description, I will have links to everything that we talked about in our chat today, including information on how you can join my Intentionally Bear Keto Support Group. See you next time.